All right, everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Today, I'm going to talk about the absolute cheapest way to wire up your LS swap and the easiest as well. Um, I keep getting a lot of questions about this and it kind of comes up and somebody pointed out earlier in one of the comments that maybe people like the Holly because it comes with a harness or, or people like, want to go with the Holly because it comes with a harness or people think that harnesses cost $600 or, or whatever. Um, they don't. If you're doing the right thing, you're pulling from a donor like this one here on the screen that is complete. Everything is there and it's been hit so that you know that it ran to the scene of the crime and you're taking everything. And this question also came up the other day. What do I cut? You don't have to cut anything on this. If you watch the junkyard jewel videos, you'll see that these come out the harness with the fuse block over here in the corner. You unbolt this fuse block and you take the whole engine and you take the harness with it. There's nothing outside of the firewall that you need to cut to take this out at all. Um, take the entire thing, including the fuse block, including the battery cables, take it all, take it with you, and you have your swap harness already. I'm going to tell you guys how to do that right now. So on a 9902, most of this information is available on lt1swap.com, by the way. Uh, some of it comes from an old LS1 tech thread. I've actually swapped several vehicles this way myself. And people want to go for a factory appearing swap, blah, blah, blah. They want it to be clean. This is actually the way to do it. Just use the whole ass block. What you're looking at here is the underside of a fuse block. Um, if you guys are subscribers, you saw my earlier two videos where I jumpered one of these in the junkyard in order to make it run um but you can do this in your swap and do it a little bit nicer so first of all the blocks are labeled c1 c2 c3 c4 these are the ones that we're concerned about in the early drive-by cable stuff on block c1 which is this far left one in this view they're labeled alphabetically left or right but backwards, A, B, so they're labeled right to left, A, B, um, and then 12, 11, 10, all the way down to 1. So you need B11, which is the second one in, if you're looking at it like this, although you wouldn't be if it was in the car. This is actually upside down if you're flipping it up. But it's the second one in and the second one from the inner edge, B11. You can actually see these on the harness too if you look carefully. You don't even have to take the plugs off to do this. You can just snip the wires and tie into them. But B11 should be hot at all times. You can run it. I don't recommend it, but you can run it directly to your battery. Uh, you can run it to your alternator. Mine on my truck has run through a fuse breaker, a circuit breaker that goes down to the starter and the alternator so I don't burn the truck down. But this needs to be hot at all times. Okay. The second one is A9 which is the inner row, and then it's the fourth one down. It's circled here in pink. This document is available on the Driveway Engineer Facebook group also, by the way. Or you can go by uh, Brendan's instructions on lt1swap.com, your, your choice. You take A9, you hook it to 12 volts, hot and crank and run, which would be like your old coil wire. If you're swapping a GM, there's a pink wire that comes out of the bulkhead that's always hot and crank and run. You can always use that. If you're using an electronic automatic transmission, a 4L60, a 4L80, a 4L65, because you're so fancy, um, you have to power the solenoid somehow. That's not done through this fuse block. So what you do is you move over one block from C1 to C2, and you take pin F2, which is down here in the lower left. You take F2. You can power that any way you want, but if you move it to pin B9 up here, two rows in, um, and then four down, that one is hot in uh, run, in crank and run. So you can power that that way. That's how I've done it in the past is I just took this from down here. I moved it up here, the end. On block C3, pin F1 will power the fuel pump with the relay and the fuse block. If you look at the fuse block, kind of cleverly um, the fuel pump relays directly on the other side of this and this is the output leg of the fuel pump so 
that's it. You're done. Purple wire to your starter out of your ignition switch if it's a Chevy and you're done. Your LS swap is completely wired. It's clean. It doesn't matter if you don't have the rear O2s. It doesn't, you don't have to thin anything. Just if you're not using it, tape it up, clip it off, whatever. It's not going to hurt a thing. It's not going to matter. It's going to be perfectly clean and sanitary. Um, there's a lot of people out there who get hung up on not seeing a single wire and wanting to reroute the PCM to like inside the rear bumper. So nobody ever sees it ever. And they have 35 feet of wire and that's all cool. If it's in your skill set, if you have the ability, but if you don't, if you've never done this before, just use it exactly the way it is from the factory. These trucks run 300,000 miles with the fuse block and, and the PCM and they're hanging out on the fender well, flapping in the breeze. So it'll be fine. If you have an 03 to 07, this is a, a full fuse block I found a picture of. I've included the picture that Brendan had down below, but it's a little, little bit hard to follow, but not really. The fuse box are labeled pretty much the same. You have C1 on the left, C2 on the right, C3, C4. And then up here you have C5, C6. I've labeled C5 twice because I'm stupid. Um... I'll fix that. Doesn't matter. C7 is the only one we're concerned about up there. So C7 is hard to see because it's buried in wires, but basically these have an in and out and they're maxi fuses. The A wire is red and that's the one that you want to be hot at all times. Down here on C1, A9, 12 volts, hot and crank and run, the same as the earlier trucks. And then also on this block, pin C9 needs 12 volts to it if you have um, an electronic transmission. So I would still do that the same way. I would just tie it together with pin A9. Whatever I use to power pin A9, I'd use to power pin C9 at the same time. I power up my, my PCM and my solenoids at the same time. I also left that out, but C3 pin uh, F1, this gray wire, it powers the fuel pump still the same as the earlier trucks. So I'll fix this document before it gets uploaded, but uh, that's it. If you're doing this right and you're doing it with a donor vehicle or you're doing it with a complete vehicle at the junkyard, you don't need to pay any extra money at all for your harness unless you want to because reasons, whatever, whatever your rationale is for that. But you definitely don't have to. So I just saved you 500 bucks or... 1200 bucks or whatever you're going to spend on a terminator that you don't need and, and have no way to use probably and uh i hope that helps you guys out and i hope it gets your swaps running sooner i hope it helps the budget out be sure to uh like and subscribe and we will see you next time on the driveway engineer be sure to share this video around too because there's people out there still who just don't get that you can do an ls swap for less than 11 billion dollars and that kind of hurts my heart i don't like it so uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.